So guys, for those of you who are live here right now on Twitch, we're going to be doing a custom track tutorial today. We're playing Sahara Hideout made by Spyro and ZPL. Basically, I, I figured I would take a different approach to doing custom track tutorials, and I think this would be a really nice approach. So if you're watching this on YouTube, this was streamed live on Twitch. And let's we'll start things off. We're gonna do a little bit of a lap with Flame Runner, and then we'll get right into it. It's just gonna be a shroomless regular driving, as you would see on Wi-Fi or like on Wi-Fi in this instance. No crazy shortcuts or anything like that. Just a standard lap around the track. I mean, obviously the lines could be something else, but hey, that's just how it'd be. Well, that was an optimal. Man, I see that alert coming in. You're slick. You know, I'm since there's a lot, I'm just praying I'm, I don't <laughs> fail the lap. <laughs> That would be really bad if I just fail the lap while I'm trying to get it for a tutorial, dude. Alright. So far, so good, though. And there we have it. That is one full lap of Sahara Hideout, normally driven. Now, let's get into the specifics of the track. All right, so to start off the track, you have this ramp right away after taking this right turn. And I just burned out. Okay, so for this first ramp, there is some road immediately after landing. And if you look above the ramp, you can see where the road is. So what you're gonna want to do for this first ramp is go off either to the middle, aka like around here, or you can go off anywhere to the right side to be very safe with your landing. So you just simply go off of it like this, and then drift and go left afterward. This turn is pretty simple, but there is some bumpy terrain on it. So what you're gonna wanna note is going on the inside will actually be a lot simpler than going on the outside. Because if you start your drift when going on the outside, you're actually gonna be swung a little bit wider than usual in comparison to going on the inside. Now then, after this ramp, very simple stuff, going around. And this turn here can be a little bit confusing. There's just a little bit of an incline before this turn. So staying wide is ideal. Now, for this section here, there is a ramp that shoots you directly downward. And followed by this, you can see that ramp in the distance. There's another ramp there. What you're going to want to do, or what I recommend in terms of consistency, is doing one trick here, but don't trick on the second one. The reason you don't want to trick on the second one is because it's normally a sticky ramp. And sometimes if you try to like, well tricking on it won't really do anything. As you can see, going over it gives you a sticky trick. But one thing that happens sometimes, at least for me when I try doing this, I don't know if I'll get this right away, but when I try doing like a hop trick on it, yeah, you see there, I actually got a lot of air from that. And basically, the reason tricking there is actually really bad is because if you're really far to the left, one thing that can happen sometimes is you can like trick into the wall. See, like you can trick there and I literally, literally just used like lost a lot of time there. So instead, one, what you're going to want to do there is after taking this ramp. Yeah, tricking is also slower because you get additional air time. As you can see here, my speedometer stays at 120 almost the whole time and then you just hop and wheelie. Okay. So these boost panels, as you can see, you want to start on the left here because the boost panels go left, right, left. And we'll stop right here for a second. So we have another one of these sticky ramps. One thing to note about this ramp is that there's dirt to the right and you have a little bit of time after you get to the top to take the turn. What you're going to want to do in this instance, you can go off of this ramp. And you have enough time to trick and then start a drift after you land. What you can also do, which is usually like, you know, just a, something for a safety net, 
you can start your drift before the third boost panel so that you're already in a drift and you don't have to worry about being really wide. Now then, once you go past that turn, you have this section here. Now, these weird pieces here, um, they do look a little bit weird, I'll admit. What you're going to want to do for that is you're going to want to trick on all of it. And the way you do that is simply hopping and doing a trick input. And you want to do that for all of these, all of these spaces. You can spam tricks here, like see, you can get a lot of tricks there. Very simple to navigate, although you want to be watchful of the thwomps, or only that one thwomp actually. Just be sure you don't like run under it when you're tricking off of the first one. So in order to avoid that, just like go to the left after the first trick, and then you'll avoid the thwomp easily. Now then, for this last section, as, as someone pointed out in the chat, I took the right path when demonstrating the left. So, the reason I took the right path is because it's a much safer and more consistent path. However, what you're going to want to do most of the time is going to the left. I'll show that real quickly here. Yeah, see, that's that's one thing I want to note. Before, before I can finish that route, going off of that ramp is very, very, like, tricky and difficult. And the reason that I tend to go to the right sometimes, like I've actually done this online as well. There are times where you won't get a trick off of that ramp and you'll actually just wheelie off. So, now that we've finished a lap here, going into the next lap, if you're going off of that ramp, you're just going to be taking a turn here. But if you're going to be going into the next lap from up here, you can actually trick off of this. Okay, that was embarrassing. Okay. We're back, so we're just gonna go on this left out here, and the trickable area is like around. Okay, now then, now that we're back here, as I've been told by the chat, going over to the right will give you a trick consistently, like that. And as I was trying to demonstrate earlier, you can trick off of here, and then get it. I hate this. <laughs> What you can do there is you can actually trick off the sign. Anyway, I'm actually going to be done there. Let's just be... <laughs> okay, okay, you know what? I think we got through the driving part of the track. Let's get to shortcuts. The longer on the top right, yeah. So, basically, now then. Let's start off with shortcuts. For the first shortcut, you have a few options here. After this sloped area, you can either shroom through this area right by this swamp. Or there is another shortcut you can do, which will save a lot more time. And that shortcut being this, this little skip right here. You can go off of this wooden ramp and there's actually some invisible road here. And now let's just, you know, I'm probably going to fail this. Yeah, that's one thing that happens sometimes. You like don't get a, you know, a hop on that. Now, for this lake shortcut, what you're going to want to note here is that there is actually invisible road on the other side. And in order to do that, you want to shroom a little bit early so you have a little bit of time to hop here. If you shroom, you know, right before it like I was doing, that's just because like you're going to get some air when initially shrooming and you're probably going to bounce over the timing that you have to do a trick. If you shroom nice and early, like maybe like back here or something, and then shrooming and then... That's another thing that happens. So... The reason I failed that right there is because I approached it a little bit too far to the left. When you approach it too far to the left and you try to hop trick to the left, that's what you got to do to make this shortcut. So if you want to do a hop trick to the left, approaching it from this sort of angle and then doing a spin drift hop to the left will actually be very helpful. Getting that spin drift hop is like something that's very like essential for the shortcut, especially if you get a side trick on it. That's one thing I should mention. So now then. You should kind of approach it from this angle, shroom early, and then get a hop. After you saw there, I was able to land the shortcut that time. And sometimes when you land, you're not going to get the same bounce that I got. So sometimes when you land the cut, you'll end up swinging into this outer wall here, where you might have to charge a standstill mini turbo, or you can just accelerate too. Because once you accelerate, you're going to be going down towards this ramp here. Now then, for the next shortcut, inside this ruins area here. Now, the method that most people do for the shortcut is just using the boost panel into the dirt, waiting a little bit, and then shrooming out. The reason you want to shroom out of there is because, like, there's a lot of off-road there. 
If you shroom too early, you know, this is gonna fall actually, so. Okay, come on. Yeah, you know what? We're just gonna fall with it. So if you shroom too early there, what actually happens is that you get stuck in the dirt and you're not gonna be able to make it out and you're not gonna get like a mini turbo when you get out of it. So for that instance, you're gonna wanna stop and then wait for like a little bit and then shroom again. Yes, Thunder, the reason you wanna use your shroom there is because there is off-road. There is too much off-road for you to cut it all off if you shroom too early. So, watch again. If we were to shroom early whenever we get into the grass, there is a small chance you'll make it. And then shrooming early, as you can see here, my mini, I don't note it all, I don't have my shroom boost for the whole way through. And I'm actually not able to get my mini turbo out. That's actually a little bit slower, and you want to shroom later so that you actually get the mini turbo. Now then, we're going to move on to the shroomless shortcut on this track. Now then, now that we're here, once you check off this ramp, you're going to want to charge a mini turbo and try to launch off of about here. The reason you want to launch off about here is because you have, if you go too high, you have enough time to cancel your wheelie before you enter the tunnel. So if you just wheel off here, as you can see, immediately made it. And this whole entire thing is, you know, boost panel. Well, all these boost panels are there, but this entrance is all boost panels. So if you get on the, if you get on the boost panel tunnel, you're going to be saving a little bit of time. However, it does save a little bit of time compared to going above. And then you simply land, you know, go to the right when you exit the tunnel and you'll be landing right at the boost panel tunnel. Now that we've kind of got that down, I'm going to try a little bit of a something else. So, there's another part of the tutorial that I kind of wanted to do. And um, it's a, you know, much more insignificant part of the tutorial, but it definitely helps. So for those of you who want to actually like get really good at time trialing the track, there's a few other things besides just the stuff that I showed you that you're going to want to do if you want to get as fast of a time as possible. So what we're going to do, we're going to be watching the best known time set by ICE, a 225.077. We're just going to look at some of the things he does throughout the lap and I'm going to say like, you know, why it's faster and just like, you know, all that stuff like that. So let's watch a replay of this. All right. So starting off right now. You're going to see right away, Ice is going to go a little bit to the left and then do a drift trick to the right. Doing a drift trick, doing a drift trick on ramps actually gives you like lower air. And there's actually another colored piece at the beginning, which gives you a trick. Okay, I'll explain why he does the shroom cut that way when he gets to the left. Now this ruined shortcut's actually really interesting because what Ice does here he perfectly times his shroom right after the boost and he gets enough boost that he's actually able to charge a mini turbo through the dirt while decelerating. So that's one thing that's like really inconsistent about that shroom cut. Sometimes you're going to be able to drift and sometimes you won't. It's one thing to know about Ice's time here. As you can see, he's able to release his mini turbo there and launch right into the tunnel and does a right trick on the way out. And I believe, yep. The trick there and drifts into the section and gets all these tricks here perfectly and with these tricks you're gonna want to space them out a little bit so that you actually you know stay at a high speed on the speedometer he didn't really do that too well in between the second and third tricks but he did it fine between the first and second and you're gonna see here he actually goes off the sign to the right we can get a little bit of a lower trick on the side of that first ramp Now for the shortcut, what he's doing here, he's wheeling off so that he gets a decent amount of air off of this side, and then he shrooms so that he has just enough speed to make it over the gap. Doing that is actually a lot safer because you're going to be able to take the line a lot tighter when you land from that shortcut. And you know, he simply goes around this ruin section here, and he's going to be doing the same stuff for all of that. All right, so one thing I forgot to mention when I was going through the layout of the track earlier is why the left track, the left left route at the end is faster. And it's because of these ramps here. Now you're gonna notice that when you, he goes off of this last ramp, he actually gets two flips there. Now that's the reason why this left route is faster. When you go on the right route, you're actually only getting one flip trick at the very end. And the difference between a one flip trick and a two flip trick ramp is that with a two flip trick ramp, 
you actually get more boost time if you have more flips. Yes, that too, Noam. If you go on the left side route, there's actually a less air time before you land on the path. That also reminds me, there is one small detail I forgot to mention before entering the, um, the, um, the last section of the track. And basically, it's at the very end of the colored pieces tricking section. It's kind of an important piece for time trialers, mainly. That, that, yeah, that would go along with the time trial part of it. And one, it would be at the very end of this. So as you can see, just going through here. And at the very end of this section, you're going to see he gets a trick off of this corner and actually gets low air there. At the very end here, he gets a low trick. And there you go. Yeah, and going to the left there actually gives you to the finish line a lot sooner because you have a straighter line and everything like that. So, that is basically everything that we need to know about bikes on this track. And now we're going to get to more of me explaining things. I know, it's going to be awful. So, what we're going to do now, since I know this was something that a lot of people wanted. Oh yes, of course, people obviously want this type of content. I'm going to be that guy, and we're going to do this with a cart. So, first things first, going to drive a lap of it with a cart. And we're going to see how this goes. Yes, it's cart time. It is true carting hours. All right. There aren't really too many differences to note when comparing the driving of this track to that of a, um, of a bike. But there are enough for it to get its own segment in this tutorial. That, at least that's how I feel, and like, parts are really neg neglected. Like, I, I understand that. I'm actually like someone who used to use carts a lot. I love using carts. I feel like it's important to explain how they work, because they really are a lot of fun. And with that, that is a lap of their hideout with a cart. So now let's break down what we needed to break down. All right, so the difference between the first turns with a cart and a bike, what you're going to want to do is do a left drift so that you're actually able to take this turn with ease after going off. Start a drift before the boost panel and then you're able to round that turn very easily. Now, for this part here, it's not all too different when you're comparing it to a bike, but if you really want, you can do a counter hop here and then charge a super mini turbo before the second boost panel so that actually lasts all the way. One thing I should note about that cannon on a cart, the type of trick you get into it actually makes the um, exit of it a little bit different. And I don't know the exact data on this, but doing a different type of side trick, an up trick, or a down trick, your cart might get pushed to the right out of the cannon. Sometimes if you're too far to the right, you'll actually get pushed into the fence. Now then, for this boost panel hill, the only real difference is at the top. What you're going to want to do, you can do a counter hop here if you want, and then start a drift here. You'll have a, you'll have a blue mini turbo once you get the top. And then if you take the turn, you know, really carefully and easily, you'll be able to get an orange mini turbo by the time you round the corner. So if you just go back here, you're, want, you're gonna wanna like already be aiming towards this third boost panel and then start your drift like right before you get to the third one. And then when you get to this section, you're gonna wanna do a little bit of a snake across these. 
get your mini turbo out before this set of three. Now, for this last section, you can get the trick consistently, as I said earlier, if you go really far over to the right. And now we get to this part. So, what you want to do for this banner here is do a bit of a drift and then get a trick here. And then you'll be able to start a left drift upon landing into the next lap. Now that we've got that set down, let's get into the shortcuts of the track with a cart. As we get to the shortcut with a cart, one thing I should note is that doing this cut with a cart is slightly easier than doing it with a bike, only for the sake that you actually don't, like a side trick doesn't affect your height. See, as you can see there, instantly made it. Now I wasn't able to tell if that was quite a up trick or a down trick or a side trick. I think it was an up trick. So basically, it's a lot easier on a cart if you do a drift into it. Because that way, you're not going to be too worried about swinging out really wide after the shortcut. I think that should be a solid wall. Yeah. And personally for me, what I like to do is I don't want to trick when I'm at the end of this ramp. Because if, if I do, I'll get too much air. But just do a drift, shroom, and then do another hop trick. And that way, when I land, I'm able to take the turn with relative ease. So... What's going to be different about this uh, cut on a cart is that you have a super mini turbo to take advantage of. And that's actually going to be really helpful for you, as you'll see right here. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start a drift going into it and maybe soft drifting. And then you release your super mini turbo as you get to the end of it. So that your mini turbo actually carries you out of the cut instead of the drift boost and the shroom boost that you wanted on a bike. If you, you can use your shroom as soon as the boost panel ends. If you use your shroom too late, you're not going to be able to drift all the way through. And then you won't be able to charge your super mini turbo. And in that instance, you're going to be losing a lot of time. So holding one drift throughout and then soft drifting it. As you can see by my input display on the bottom left, my control stick is on the top left notch. Wow, I almost forgot my directions. The top left notch of the control. That way I get a mini turbo as fast as a normal hard drift without going all the way over. And finally, we're gonna go over the shroomless tunnel cut with a cart. Also another shortcut that uses the super mini turbo instead. You're gonna wanna drift off this ramp, charge the mini turbo, and then go off about there. Yeah, that was a really bad indicator, my bad. I think I should be able to go back. I don't know. Okay, good, I am. Okay. So we'll be able to just go backwards right here, and then we'll be able to see where that mini turbo release. Doing it with a regular MT is possible. I mean, you can just do that. And Okay, well, you don't want to do that. If you release your mini turbo too late, and if you go off of it too late, you're just going to hit the top of it, and you can't climb back into it. Like, the ledge isn't, like, extended out compared to the top of it. You're going to have to land in it if you want to make it. A release time something along the lines of T. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit of a trial and error thing. You're gonna want a super mini turbo for that. Because getting a super mini turbo gives you way more time in the air with the boost. A blue mini turbo barely gives you any boost time at all. So if you, you want to release it like later compared to the super mini turbo. And there we go, we're in there. And for this one, you're gonna want to do a right trick when you get out of or a, yeah. A left drift when you get out of it so that you swing out to the right. And then go up the boost panel hill and continue all the way here. So yeah. I think that's all we're going to have for now. I might have forgotten something. And if I didn't, well, that's my bad. No, we're not showing off the Easter egg. So, that's all we're going to have for now. That took a lot less time than I thought, actually. So, yeah, this is... Yeah. That was really fun. That was actually a really fun thing to do. And I'm probably going to keep doing all this stuff. So, yeah. You guys see this tutorial on YouTube. Thank you for watching this. A lot of fun to play.